Well, welcome back again, kids. Today we are going to work on this little Martin guitar. We're going to do a general setup on it, and uh, the action's way high. We're going to set the neck relief and all that crap, and um, take that action down, get some measurements. I'll show you how to calculate the. I showed this before, but the new subscribers probably didn't see it, those videos. So I'll show you how to take measurements here at the 12th fret determine how much we want to lower the action and how to figure up how much to take off of the saddle back here to get that action down. Uh, first thing we need to do though, right, real quick here, is check the neck relief and just to see if we're anywhere near anywhere near specs. Now you've seen me do this a million times before, but we, I just want to make sure it's close. Put a capo on the first fret. I'm going to note down here at the 17th fret because that truss rod comes down to about right there. So it's going to actually control everything from the 17th fret to the nut. So i uh, got a capo on the first fret. Note the 17th fret. We want to check about the 7th, 8th, and 9th frets. I have a 10 thousandths feelers gauge here. So, and we are at, we may have to put some more relief in this neck, but I want to get the action down first. We're at 10 thousandths right now, neck relief, which is good, but like I say, we got to get the action down lower than that. Um, see what the action actually is in playing position right always check it in playing position this action like I say it's high first uh, first string high E action is 864 good lord And it's 864 on the on the on the low E as well. Now we would like to see uh, Martin's minimum specs on that is 332 seconds, so that would be equivalent to 664. We're at 864 now. We want to lower this thing. Um, Six, seven, eight. Six sixty-four. So we want to lower lower it at least by two sixty-four. Or one thirty second. So to do that, we need to take twice the amount that we want to drop this. Let's say we want to drop the action up here at the 12th fret. Uh, drop it 15 thousandths, okay? This is just a, an example again, just you know, to get the point across. We want to drop this action down 15 thousandths from what it is now, as an example, okay? That means we have to take approximately 30 thousandths off the bottom of the saddle to get this to drop half of that. So keep that in mind. Whatever you want this to come down at the 12th fret, you take double the amount off of the saddle. And then we'll get a truer neck relief setting and probably have to adjust that. Maybe not. And we'll check the nut action and all that too. Uh, got the pick guard came in the mail today. I was going to video, include in this video, I was going to cut one out and, and include that in the video. But the guy wanted this kind of a reddish collar. I don't know if you can see that in that plastic or not, but I didn't have any material, that collar, anywhere near that collar. So I had to order the pick guard for it, and that's what I, it's had me held up waiting on that. But I got it in. It looks good. Looks like it'll fit. We're going to put this on last. So hang around. Let me uh, get the saddle out of it, get some measurements in the market. And I'll bring you back and show you what's going on, how to get that action down, and do a uh, you know just a general setup on your guitar. Hold on.
Well, here's exactly how we're going to do it. Instead of figuring in 64, um, instead of figuring in 64, so we'll figure in thousands, okay? We use the low E string. It's at 100. It'll be a little bit easier math this way. And we would like to see that around 80 thousandths. It's at 100 thousandths right now. Base string at 100 thousandths. We want to drop it to at least 80 thousandths. That's a difference of 20 thousandths. Okay? That means we got to take 40 thousandths off of the saddle back here to lower that action that much. That's quite a lot, too, but that's what the specs say. That's what physics prove. So. I'm going to turn the camera off, loosen the string, just tuned up to pitch. And I'm going to turn the camera off, loosen the strings, mark the saddle, get uh, everything set up here. I'll bring you back and show you how to get to set the, how I take the saddle down. So hang on a minute. Here's a method that makes some people nervous. I take wire cutters and I get a hold of the saddle. And just very gently lift it up. I may have to loosen those strings. I am going to have to do a little bit, I think. A little bit more. Hold on. Take wire cutters. Gently get a hold of your saddle and just pull it up on both ends. And there we go. And that saddle do fit in there tight. It's in the slot time. So you can see we have a lot of saddle there. I hope you can see that mark. I put a mark on it. Man, I don't know if you can see it or not in that camera with this the way the light is. Yeah. There you can see the mark. That's how much of the saddle was sticking up. Now I gotta measure from the bottom down here and uh, mark another mark on there so we were at a hundred thousandths we want to drop that down to about eighty thousandths which is a difference of uh, twenty thousandths okay so what I gotta do is measure from the bottom of the saddle here measure up um, forty thousandths and uh, then sand it put a new line here and then sand all of that off until we reach the line and that should put our action roughly around 564 664 somewhere in that neighborhood so hold on let me get set up for that all I did was take this it's got a little measuring device in the end of it there you can see it micrometer and I set the bottom of the micrometer on the bridge, crank this out, put a couple of little marks on there, then put a straight edge across from my marks and marked it across. And you can see, oh God, I don't know if you can see it or not. Anyways, there's a mark on the bottom of the bridge here, and I have to sand away up to the uh, this side of that mark. Okay? Now, usually, I normally, if you can see this vise, there's a tiny vise here, right there. And usually, I put this in a vise, like so, okay? And I let only what I want to remove stick up above the vise. Then I can take a belt sander and sand it down until, you know, I'm flush with the line and I'm set. But rather than do that, I've got these funky vice grips here. And what I'm going to do is just put the put the saddle down in these this vice. I made this vice just for this. And I'm going to let the amount of saddle stick out that I want to sand away to remove, okay? And then I can just set the belt sander down here, set up my sand sucking device that you guys love so well and uh, catch the dust. And let's get right on this, and I'm going to sand that thing down, and I'll bring you back when I'm set up and ready to do that. Hold on. So as you can see, here's this uh, great ingenuity that I have came up with. Sucks the, uh, you don't want to breathe much of that stuff, so that just kind of catches it as it comes off the sander. 
and I don't have to breathe so much of it. So let's do it. <laughs> And there you go. So see what I've done is taken that down right down to the vise. Same thing if I would have had it in the vise up here, the little one I showed you. It's just a different method. It's cold outside. I don't want to go up in the shop and have to heat the place up just to long enough to do what I just now did. So there it is. Taken right down to the line. Uh, we should have action very close to 5 or 6 64s right now. Oh, I want to take, this thing fits in there really tight, so I'm going to take a little bit off of the side. Ah, oh, yes. It's a beautiful thing. So what we're going to do now, put the saddle back in, tune it up to pitch, check the action, and see how close we got to 564s or 664s. Hold on. saddle back in, got it tuned up to pitch. Boy, that little thing sounds so good to be so small and I can't find my action, string action gauge. Uh, oh, there we are. Now, we was at a hundred thousand. Hundred thousands, remember? We wanted to see around eighty thousands. That's a difference of twenty thousands. So we took off 40 thousandths of the saddle, and we are at 80 thousandths. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that, but not 90. But what, what I'm after are 64s, okay? Martin Specs, there again, the minimum on the uh, bait on the uh, high E string is 330 seconds. That's Martin's minimum. That's 330 seconds, 664s. And we are down to 464s. That's well within the minimum and maximum. The maximum on the high E string is 564s. And we're at 464s. So we are between about, uh, we're not mid, but we're between Martin's uh, recommendations between uh, uh, minimum and maximum. Okay? Anyways, 464 on the high E, 12th fret, in playing position, I might remind you. And what do you know? 664, let's see, 4, 5. About 664, it's, it's closer to 664 than it is 564. And the maximum on, on the base side is 764, so the minimum is 330 seconds. So we're well within Martin specs. We're not over the maximum or under the minimum. We're in the middle of those. And that's exactly where we wanted to land. So, boy, I can see a difference in that action too already. I don't know if the camera will get it or not, but you can probably see it better from this side. It's down there pretty good for an acoustic guitar. And I think the guy is, he doesn't play real heavy, but he doesn't play real light either. So I don't want to get it so low that it buzzes, you know, if he, play, if he wants to jam on it pretty hard. Okay, we need to check the neck relief again. 
probably are going to end up checking the neck relief many, many, many times. Because it can change. If you loosen, if you break a string, or if you loosen all your strings and take them off and put new strings all back on, you better check your neck relief because it's probably going to be different than what it was. Still have that tin here. I got a capo on the first fret. Going to note the 17th fret. Check uh, seven, eight, and nine. We are at ten thousands. Right on the money. I'm going to check this and see if it buzzes because that, that ten thousandths will go under there, but it's pretty tight. And if there's any buzzes, we have you know a little room there to put more relief in the neck, but I think it's going to be fine. It's probably closer to nine thousandths, but that's okay too, as long as it doesn't buzz. The neck is almost straight on this guitar. And there again, I can take the, the action down a little bit more than that, but uh, the guy, I think he plays heavier than I do, so, you know, we're well within Martin specs there, so I'm not going to worry about that. That's good. Neck relief is at ten thousandths. All good to go. So if you ever want to check your neck relief, guys, that's the way to do it. And that's the way that, well, that's the way I do it, and that's the way I uh, lower the action. There again, you know, if you want to, if what you are reading at the 12th fret action needs to come down, say, 20 thousandths, you got to take 40 thousandths off the saddle to make that happen. And it will get you very close every time. I got a whole bunch of videos on this stuff, but someone wanted me to show this, so here we go. Okay, what next? Um, well, let's see if it buzzes anywhere. You should play every single fret on the guitar. There's no buzzing on any fret, so that uh, ten thousandths relief. I like to see, normally I'd like to see on a, on a full size guitar. That's another reason we can let this go a little under ten because it's a short scale, it's a small body guitar. Uh, but it generally, generally, I like to see between 10 and 12 thousandths neck relief on uh, dreadnought guitars that I set up. But uh, like I say, this being a shorter scale little guitar, it worked on the parlor. It worked on the Gibson LG2. I got videos of all that if y'all want to check them out. Uh, 9 thousandths is fine on this little guitar. It's going to be okay. So, we're set up. Don't have to do anything to the nut. I do want to check the nut action. And uh, we like to see about 18, around 18 thousandths there on the nut action. So I'll take a 10 and an 8. Should do it for starts. Now, I used to do this crap. I can't even remember what it was. Note to 3rd fret, I think. I don't even remember the numbers. And then I would measure it like that, but that's all... You know, get your action right first. Then check your your nut action, you know, without noting it. And ideally around 18 thousandths is what you, I like to see or what, you know. And boy, would you look at that. Man, I like that when it happens that way. Holy shit. <laughs> Alright. Make sure. You gotta love Sky Cam. Alright, I'm gonna put this pick guard on now. Check this out. Isn't that a cool little pick guard? I didn't have that collar or that kind of material here, so I couldn't. I could cut it out of black or the uh, tiger. I have some tiger like material, but he wanted a reddish collar, kind of like the old guitars do, uh, have. Okay, this is much smaller, but smaller scale. Usually, the way I do this 
is I place that pick guard exactly where I want it to go. Okay? Usually I get it exactly where I want it. I'm going to have to do this different and I'll show you why. I'm just going to have to lay it on there and slide it until I get it in. I'm going to have to do this totally different from the way I normally do. And the reason being, normally I lay it on exactly where I want it, okay? Hold it down, and I would put a piece of tape here. Just masking tape here, or painter's tape, and another piece over here. And that works like a hinge, and then what I can do is just fold the pick guard over, and then let it fall down a few times to be absolute that it's going to fall exactly there where I want it. I can't do that in this case because as you see the pick guard goes underneath the first and second strings uh, so I can't let it just I can't hinge it like you normally would and let it fall because the strings are in the way so the only other option I have is sticking that thing on there by hand and I'm not real happy about having to do that but sometimes you gotta compensate. <laughs> I'm just uh, peeling off the sticky paper. Okay, I just want to get it close as I possibly can. You want to work from the center of the pick guard out so you don't get any bubbles. Don't like bubbles in our pick guards. Now I always like to take a hair dryer and just you don't want to heat it up hot, you don't want to get the thing hot, but you do want to get it warm and and continue to rub it. So here we go with the hair dryer. I've got a big bomber hair dryer here. actually a little bit cool in this room right now. We're going to get it warm enough to ensure that the adhesive really bonds. This guitar doesn't have any finish on it, so I did make sure it was clean. Yeah, I think we're good to go there, folks. Little Martin LX1, and that's what it's called, a Little Martin LX1, with a pick guard. Now I'm going to go over this thing again, and you know, I'm going to let it set for a few days, and over the weekend I'm going to keep it and play it some, and I'll send it back to the owner, uh, put it in the mail on Monday, but I want to check the neck relief again, I, I won't do that on video, but check the neck relief again, check the action again, check the... Uh, everything all over again you know after it sets for a couple of days you can see what the pick guard looks like there now really changed the looks of this guitar it looks uh, I don't know it looks better I think
sure tell I'm not used to this little tiny guitar. Man, it chords really nice though. much sound for such a tiny guitar. I can't play it, but the, my hands are getting better, but I'm just not used to it. I've been playing a great big Martin, and it, this thing seems really tiny to me. But there it is. It's done deal. It's got the pick guard on it. It looks really good, I think. I hope the owner's happy with that collar. He wanted the old reddish looking, uh, I guess they were a pre-war style collar pick up on Martin guitars. That's what he wanted. I didn't have that material or I would have just cut it out myself and showed you all that, but uh, you got to do what you got to do however you can do it. You know what I mean? So, uh, thank you guys for hanging around. I hope somebody got something from this video. Uh, I'm going to do a series video again on that Fender Bass uh, Music Master. In fact, I want to put a video up really soon of that and show you that key that I need. If any of you guys got a key that will fit that, would be a big help. I'll buy it, trade it off of you, whatever. Uh, I, I don't want to buy the whole set. The, the other keys work fine. I only need one. So, uh, if you have an old bass key, Dave, if you're watching this, you know who you are. I'm talking about Dave in uh, Canada, the world of fun stuff. If you see this, surely you got bass keys laying around, dude. Let's talk. Uh, and I want to thank the new subscribers. The traffic is indeed picking up. Subscriber count going up. I'm digging it. Thank you guys so much, man. I appreciate every one of your support. I'll try to entertain you well this new year. I hope everybody had really great, happy holidays as well. A great Christmas and a safe New Year's Eve. And I uh, hope you have a safe New Year. So, uh, thank you guys. Thank the old subscribers, too. I appreciate I know some of you guys have been around here. Uh, this channel, the 30th of December, which just passed, I think that this channel was nine years old on that day. You know, and I let it lie dormant for a long time, and should have never done that, but I had things to do, you know what I mean? So anyways, thank you guys, the old and new subscribers alike. Um, like I say, if you have a bass key, post down here or post on the next video I'm going to post of that bass. I'll show you the key up close, what it looks like. In fact, I may just make that video right now when I get done here. It'll be a different one from this one, though. Anyways, thanks, guys and gals, for uh, hanging around. I hope that helps some of you maybe adjust your acoustic guitar a little bit. You know, I'm going to do a, another video, too. People have been asking me a lot of weird shit about if you put oil on the fingerboard why not put oil inside the guitar where it's not uh, where it's just bare wood um, the reason you don't do that is because you got finish all over the outside that inside is the only control that you have of fluctuating the humidity whether it's if it's dried out it needs moisture that being bare in there is the way you know that you moisten it back up or if it's over humidified you know there again that being open in there let's let it dry out and get back to normal it's a means of adjustment of humidification in your guitar you don't oil or finish the inside of the guitar I don't know <laughs> two or three or four people or more than that on Facebook ask me about that I don't know where they're getting these ideas at but uh, uh, just a whole bunch of stuff, man. You guys have been asking me. I'll try to do videos and answer. I'm keeping notes of everything, and because uh, I never remembered if I don't. But on videos to come, I'll tell you about all that stuff in depth. We'll get into it, and we're going to talk more about rosewood. This is not rosewood, obviously, but boy, oh boy, I'm hearing some shit about types of woods that go into acoustic guitars. That is totally, totally wrong information. I don't know where some of you guys are hearing this stuff at, but hang around. I'm going to teach you the facts of it and the truth of the matter. 
thanks guys and gals and I'll see you real soon uh, I feel like I gotta get down like this to get into the camera and I know when I get up close to the camera my eyes get black and that makes me look like Satan and I don't like it I look enough like him the way it is I too much like him too cheers guys I'll see you soon